So uh, most of the people that are in management that have been here for a while, you figure they've got this thing down pat. I mean, how could they possibly procrastinate in any corner, uh, causing themselves to you know, hinder their situation? Uh, and it happens. Uh, it doesn't matter how high up you are in the food chain. Um, uh, both Erica and Jen uh, were kind of tapping me on the shoulder and asking me questions about, you know, how, how did X, Y, and Z happen with your progress within the organization? And what are some of the obstacles that you had to overcome? Procrastination is one of them, I think, for everybody. Uh, and the root of all uh, procrastination is fear. Uh, and there are very frequently times when I walk into a large prospect or back to a re-enrollment where there's been a change of the guard and I don't know how that enrollment's going to come out because this is somebody that I haven't worked with before and I walk in with some really intense fear and when I told Erica that and I told Jen that they said I don't believe you and I'm here to tell you it's the God's honest truth you know anytime uh, and I'll let him go ahead and go ahead and read that at its roots, procrastination is al almost always based on some kind of fear. And figuring out how to beat that fear is the key to unprocrastination in the long run. And that comes with identifying fear at its root. Okay, so when, when you're looking at, um, you know, I'm nervous, uh, I'm anxious, uh, I don't understand this. Um, Nine times out of 10, when you kind of filter it down to where the pain point's coming from, it's, it is based on fear. It's not that other word that you're using. Uh, and go ahead. Quick fixes are fine, but if the fear remains unabated, they will continue to act on you, causing you to want to procrast procrastinate dis despite your best intentions. So how do you beat fear? One of the reasons fear can be so powerful is because it lurks in the dark, unnoticed. In the recesses of our minds, it acts without us knowing it. So the first step is to shine some light on it. Okay, so you notice how Tyler constantly throws the metrics out. Do you know, you know, one of the reasons that he's doing this is because there's, there's some basic math to this, you know. You, a lot of you guys are making more than 75 stops right now, but if you wanna be successful doing this, you've gotta make a minimum of 75 stops a week. It's just, if, you, if you're not getting that experience, okay, and getting past the fear factor of doing that, you're inevitably gonna end up failing. You know, it's, you're, you're pushing out, oh, I don't want to go talk to that prospect that was kind of gruff with me. You know, I don't want to make the follow-up with this person because maybe I thought I was a two on a scale from one to ten with regards to how well they responded to that, uh, to that presentation. And you get back in there and you find out that, you know, they were just having a bad day. Uh, you, you really probably hit it at a, at a seven or an eight, and you just got a bad read off of that individual. Um, and when you're looking at uh, the mechanics of, of, of doing this job, Typically, you're going to want to jump into the stuff that you feel best at. Okay, go ahead and finish reading, and I think it'll break it down here in a second. Fear hates light. The light is our attention, our examining of the fears, our taking a close look at them to see if they're rational or baseless. Okay, when I worked for, um, I guess the best way to explain this, because uh, your brain does this without you thinking about it. When I worked for SolarWinds, which has nothing to do with solar energy, has nothing to do with wind energy, it was a network monitoring solution. And they have a piece of software that basically goes and does discovery on the network. It pings every device, every endpoint on the network, okay? And takes data back from that so that they know that CPU's fan speed, how much storage is taken up on the hard drive, uh, is it about to overheat? Uh, with the military use of the thing, you know, how hot is that 50 cal, okay? With regards to a $100,000 uh, truck motor uh, that's got a minimum wage or you know slightly above minimum wage driver on it that sees an oil light and just doesn't care, and they're about to blow up a $100,000 motor, it's it's setting thresholds of of identification, okay, in all these different areas, so that one network monitoring solution can basically come back and say, here, this needs to be fixed. You know, why is uh, accounting's uh, router crashing, uh, well, because there's a ton of throughput of data, and the reason is everybody in bookkeeping around now is watching a, a cat video, okay? So, you're, no, seriously. And so they'll set thresholds in there uh, to say, okay, well, if it hits if it hits 95% for a couple of minutes, no big deal. If it gets to the five minute point, let me know, all right? So your pain, your fear, 
your nervousness, your anxiety, all these things that you're experiencing that are either slowing you down in the field to where, oh, I gotta stop and get a Coke. You know, that's great. Just drive with a Coke in the car. Um, I gotta stop, stop, stop and get a Coke, clear my mind. I just came out of a place where somebody, you know, was not so nice to me. That's gonna happen one out of every 50 to 60 places that you stop and come across somebody that's having a bad day. And you have to be able to acknowledge that although I felt very uncomfortable in that situation and there was fear that they were gonna kick me out of there, that person was probably just having a bad day. You don't know if their kid was sick, they came in late, the boss chewed them out, and you don't know what the circumstances are on the other side of the fence. And until they've seen you enough out in the field to have the comfort factor to share that stuff with you, you get in the hand, okay? So just continue to remember that uh, the people behind the counter are people just like you. Go ahead. Once we've shined a light on the fears, we can beat them with information. For example, if you're afraid you're going to fail, well, do a small test and see. If you don't fail, that's information. You now know that. At least with a small test, you won't necessarily fail. Keep repeating the test and you'll gather a lot of information that is contrary to the fear. Beating the fear because you, know, you now know with good certainty that it is based. So what's the test that we do in the script? On the front end and the back end of the presentation. What's the testing that we're doing? The fear is they're going to tell us no, right? The rebuttal. Okay, so the objection, okay, that they're laying down ties directly into a rebuttal, all right? The rebuttal is there so that you can fish out what's, what's the fear in them doing business with you, and it's there so that you can get past your fear as well of why are they telling me no? Because, you know, nine times out of ten, even if they do you know, even if they do hit you with an objection that you don't have an answer for, uh, it's happened to somebody else in here. Pick up the phone, call your managers, uh, find out what the, what the scoop is on that specific issue. Uh, a lot of times, they're not going to word the objection the same way that it is in the script. And so you, you get in there, you choke, you have that fear factor, you step outside, then you realize, well, they weren't saying... Uh, this is, you know, my, my employees can't afford this. They're saying, the guy said, well, the last time, you know, the last time that we did this, we had X, Y, and Z happen. And you fish out in his wording after the fact that, oh, well, that's, that's the same thing that was in the, the objections that I've learned. It was just worded to me differently. And until you've done this enough times, you've hit the 75 stops for three or four weeks in a row, you're not going to be able to identify what, what caused you to choke and not put two and two together while you're out there, out there in the field. With, with regards to uh, doing large re-enrollments and having a new person that's a board uh, that you haven't worked with before, this is something, this is why I did this. I was talking to Tyler about it. You know, I said, I've got this huge month coming up. May and December are my two biggest months because I've got my three largest clients that re-enrolled during those timeframes. And I've staggered it so that, you know, two of the, th the three are doing their annuals in the same month. And then six months later, they're doing their mid-year, which is seeing people, after you've been out there for a while, it's seeing people that have been there for less than a year because you don't need to re-up them on the, uh, the, the no-cost stuff. And then it's just the opposite for the, for the third company. But those, those two months are huge. And you know, he said, well, you know, so what have you got going on this month? Said, well, I've got my three largest clients doing their, two of them are doing a, an annual re-enrollment and one of them is doing a mid-year re-enrollment. And he said, so what do, you, I mean, what do you think? I said, well, as always, I'm nervous. You know, I'm afraid of all the things that can go wrong. And inevitably, once you jump into it, i.e. shine the light on it, you know, there's nothing there that you haven't experienced before. Here you're going to have different things that, that, that take place that you haven't been exposed to, but there's a correlation to the same stuff that's happening to your other jobs. You just kind of have to find that comfort factor to be able to move through them. Most of the reason that a lot of people don't go out, and we've just seen this uptake in the, uh, the number of stops that, that you guys have made, most of the reason that people don't go out and make that many stops it's because they're just af they're afraid of hearing the no, you know. And you're you're gonna see you're gonna get the reward from all the stops that you guys made last week because you're gonna see a larger number of uh, people that were actually gonna have you back in for the follow-ups to get into a presentation. And then there's a whole new bundle of fears to take place too. You just constantly, if you're wanting to procrastinate on any of this stuff, you're gonna have to constantly ask yourself, where is the fear? Go ahead. Shine a light on the fear. Run small tests and beat it with information. Let's first look at some of the fears that cause procrastination and then talk about shining a light on the fears. Keep going. 
A number of fears contribute to pro procrastination, including, but not limited to two. Sorry. Fear that you'll fail or do badly, probably the most common one. Fear of the unknown. The task is not familiar to you, so you don't know what to do or where to start. So there's a thousand, how many times have you heard there's a thousand moving parts in this job? And when you first come aboard, we're trying to have you focus on the first couple hundred of them. Um, but there's still like 800 of them that are unknown. You know, I dread doing conservation. I dread doing, uh, well, I don't really dread doing recruiting, but I mean, it, that's, a, that's more of a dreading the time management to do the recruiting. You know, you're, you just, you constantly have to push through the factory. Keep going. Fear of the uncomfortable. It's easy to do things we're comfortable with, but doing new things is uncomfortable, so we put them off. Fear of starting in the wrong place. You don't start because what if you're not starting the right way? And have any of you guys heard the seven second rule? Like if there's something that you haven't done or maybe you've done it before and you failed at it or you've done it before and you were definitely in that uncomfortable zone. And it's time to do it again. And if you just put seven seconds into it, or seven minutes into it, excuse me, uh, seven seconds. Maybe you do. Um, put seven minutes into it and, and more than likely you've, you've found a way to, you know, how do you eat an elephant, you know, one bite at a time. Uh, you'll you'll find the first seven minutes worth of bites and get past the fear factor. So, so you know, like he's saying, with 1,600 stops, now you're going to get into the next. Especially this is for the newbies that have been here for two, three weeks. You you're you're going to get into the next step of going back in to do those follow-ups, and you're going to have those presentations and the back end objections. Be sure that now you go and restudy those so that there's less field factor while you're doing that. And your correlation of Rachel, what were you telling me? It's six presentations to a close. No, we're at 5.4. 5.4, uh, 5 okay, so that's come down just due to a lot of extra training. Um, you'll, you know, you'll get to the point to where it's, it's every three or four uh, that you, every three or four presentations that you do, you end up getting a close. Uh, but that's just, it's just overcoming time duration, you know, I mean, just keep pushing through it until you've had all of the no's. You're, you're fishing out the objections for a reason uh, and eventually going to get to the point to where it's second nature. Anybody have any questions?